Hey guys, and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Hannah Lee Yoder, and I'm so happy you're here. I am gonna have my husband jump in the hot seat because I think that'd be fun for you guys. Uh, thank you for being here. So what's my role? I am a homemaker, farm wife, stay-at-home mom, and Bible-believing Christian. And I just want to share my heart for Jesus and my love for what I do with you guys. I'm just really grateful for the challenge of influencing because it really helps me direct my artistry and my mindset. I think there's something so beautiful about romanticizing everyday life. This is my husband. Were you about to lick my hand? You did go like this. And I just stop, okay? <laughs> I can't do this. You know what? Let's just go straight into the video. Let's just go ahead and answer their question. What qualities of mine made you fall so madly in love no, with that's me? No, not, that's not how the question goes. Oh, it really? says, okay, my bad. It says, what qualities are you looking for in a husband? That's what I said. I wanted a man that was going to work. I wanted a man who was going to work. I just think that men who work are just delicious. I just wanted a man that worked. Yummy! Huh? I said, there's nothing more delicious than you after work. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Qualities I was looking for in a husband. Hardworking, masculine, godly. What, what qualities were you specifically looking for in a wife? Okay, well, most importantly, someone that wanted to be a wife a biblical wife, basic Christian values, um, moral values, kind of person that I could see as being the mother of my children. I mean, we have three kids right now and they're all wonderful. Most of the time. Most of the time. And, you know, Maybe we have a fourth one, maybe we don't. And I think it's sort of my approach. It, uh, what? Yeah. Let's give me our last child, please. That's what you want. Oh no, I feel like I'm gonna be here a year, two years from now again. Well, I mean, pumpkin spice lattes do hit different. <laughs> hey. Thank God. <laughs> What branch were you growing up? Uh, oh, Pilgrim Mennonite. We were Pilgrim Mennonite. Mm -hmm. Oh, so we were yeah. the same branch of Mennonite. The church that you did, the, the, the church that you were associated with is my grandpa went to all the time. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I thought we were different branches. Okay. God is great and God is good. This one's a good question. Okay. What are some of your pet peeves about me? Hmm. 
You interrupt me when I'm talking. You almost did it again. <clears throat> That's valid. Okay, what are my pet peeves about you? Yeah, what are they? What are my pet peeves? I've got a lot, Bradley. Oh, wow. A whole lot. There's you, so, so should many. Should I get you a pen and paper? There's so many. But love keeps no record of wrongs, so mm -hmm. I'm not going to even list them because I love you so much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hello. That is one of my pet peeves. Taking that. work calls on your day off. Anna. It makes me mad. What is one thing you appreciate about how we handle conflict in our relationship? I think mainly it's just that we're not afraid to actually deal with it. I just appreciate that no matter how bad it gets, I know that I'll wake up the next day and you'll still be there and you'll still be 100% in the relationship. I think that's something that I appreciate because I know you ain't going nowhere. And I guess, I guess that's a good thing. What is your favorite memory from our early days of dating? Mm. I know. Oh, the coffee it. shop date. What? Coffee shop date. When the Christmas in Farmville, when the Christmas lights were on the streets and we sat on the couch mm. in the coffee shop <laughs> and drank coffee and watched the lights. And I am at a loss because you don't drink coffee now. But you used to always take me on coffee dates. I didn't necessarily enjoy the coffee, but I enjoyed the date. So I would drink the coffee because I enjoyed the date. I just can't believe you would drink coffee that much for me. Wait, that's 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 beautiful, Rodney. That's beautiful. Yeah, you wrote me a song yeah. because you love me. I can you tell us how the song goes? I will not be telling you how the song goes on. So you can don't. you tell us? Can you tell us? It is a, it is an Sing it, sing it, it for is, us. It is an intensely private song. Okay, that's my favorite memory because it was so, so funny. Because I thought, I literally thought, funny? I literally thought you were going to propose to me. Like, it, I literally thought you were funny. proposing to me. No, no, I did that over text. Um, uh, you ruined it. I was literally about to say, they asked, how did you propose to Hannah Lee? Go ahead, with tell a, him. With a, with a very uh, elegantly worded text. Goodbye. I think it was responding to a text she had sent, and I think the exact wording was, well, then you should marry me. Yeah. That is exactly Very what elegant. Was. Very, uh. And I was like, wait, are very, you serious? Very, very Shakespeare. And then I was like, wait, are you serious? Give me a call. And then he called me, and he's like, yeah, I'm serious. Let's get married. And I was like, this is cool. Ever the romantic. Like everybody gets a cute proposal. How many people can say they got proposed to over text? See? I gave you something unique and special. No, you gave you me something. You simply don't appreciate because it. Because you were a baby. And we were babies. No. And we were in love. No. We were just kids. We were so excited to get married. So what did we do? Tell them what we did. We eloped. Oh, gosh. Don't ever do that, folks. Don't, I mean, do, do it. But, like, tell your family. At least tell your families. Yeah, well, that's a good point. Yeah, that's... In hindsight, I still... It still embarrasses me to know him. That we thought that we could, like, never tell him. I still don't understand the logic behind that. Was there any logic behind that? No, no, not really. Because I don't think we... Not really. I don't even know... Lord have mercy. Hey. If our relationship had a soundtrack, what songs would be on it? Yeah! Halfway there. Oh, Why would that be on it? Take my Why hand. Would that be we'll on make it up. Because okay, like, it's so hard. Okay, so now you can't put that on YouTube. Why? You can't you because you sound just <laughs> like Bon Jovi. No, I don't. <laughs> Banana Pancakes by Jack Johnson. What? Make it banana pancakes. Pretend like it's the weekend. Ain't no need to <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Baby, lock the door. That one. Yes. Okay. Um, no. Th what are three things that you appreciate about our relationship? I really don't think I'm allowed to say that on YouTube. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs> what? What would you buy me if I gave you five dollars and asked you to go buy me something? <coughs> 
don't answer her until I'm done having my asthma attack. <clears throat> answer the question. Well, I, I mean, it kind of matters whether it's a gift or not because if, like, we're, I could go like a Chick Fil A sandwich or. Which, you know, There's only one thing of. that's on my mind right now. Oh gosh. One thing. One thing on my mind that if I asked, if I gave you five dollars and told you to buy me, if you don't stop doing this in male math, do this in girl math. Five dollars means eight dollars. Five dollars means uh, ten dollars. Five dollars can even mean fifteen dollars. Okay. That's girl math. I'm trying to figure out if it's like a gift or if I'm buying you food because it's... It's the same thing. Food is a gift. It's not. It is when you're greedy. Zaxby's? No. No, sorry. Wrong. Hmm. It's at Ingalls. It's at Ingalls? Yes. Yes. Uh, raisin cream pies? No. <laughs> <laughs> Always coffee. We need to, you need to remember this. Remember this because Christmas is coming up. Coffee, gift cards for coffee, more coffee, coffee on the side, coffee decorations, coffee in the shape of coffee. <laughs> How to find peace with several toddlers running around screaming all the time. You don't. You just don't. You don't. You survive. You survive, you try to instill uh, order and peace as and much you, as you can. It's just kids, kids. There's chaos. Kids are chaotic. Chaotic. It but is what it is. You just have to learn to love the chaos. You have to learn to let go of... Embrace the chaos. <laughs> are you guys trying to find a new church? I mean... Not, not, okay, we're going to, we're not going to stop going to church. We're not looking for a new church to join at this moment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what happened between you guys and y'all's old church? We played the fifth. No, here's, here's the deal. Nothing good would come out of it. Um, with everything that happened, I... I thought there could be some sort of coming together for accountability, reconciliation and all that. But when that, when my attempts at that got completely squashed, we realized that there was no way for that to happen. So at that point, rather than sacrificing our time and our sanity and all of that, trying to fight it we just walked away honestly i probably would have fought it more if it wasn't for hannah so yeah I'm ironically ironically because you would think she would be the one trying to fight but she she was more it, toward the end of it anyway she was much more calm about it than i was the way this whole situation is being handled wasn't biblical but the thing is, when a denomination uses a Bible until the Bible isn't convenient, and then it comes back into the denomination, that's when you're like, okay, you realize, wow, you really have been pulled a fast one on, honestly. And that's where we were. We were like, oh, we thought that this church operated so biblically. But then when things were called into question because it was not biblical, then, oh, y'all going about your way because y'all causing too much problems. Anyway. But yeah, that's, 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 that's the long it. and the short of it. This feels very, the whole situation just feels very much like we had to leave the Mennonites. When you leave the Mennonites, there's a, like a shun. Oh, no, leaving the Mennonites for, at least for us, was much cleaner than this. <sighs> so what made you guys leave the Mennonites? I mean, I was 14, so it wasn't really my choice to my parents. Just disagreement of beliefs. Yeah. Um, I didn't, we didn't leave until I was grown. I was 17 years old, 18 when I got married to him. So we were just, I guess marriage kind of bought me out of the Mennonite mentality. Are you, what, what happened to you guys' this old house and are you in a new house? So we're living on the farm yes. now. The, we still own the house we were living in. We are just renting it out for now. Yeah. Yeah, so we, we renovated a double wide and we live on the farm. 
and it's been challenging. I know you're like, what are her thoughts on this? It's been superbly challenging, but I am making it into a beautiful home. And we just, it's just, it's, it's, it's Biden's economy and our mortgage was just swallowing us. So we opted to rent out our home to pay the mortgage, but we'll probably end up selling our home eventually just because you don't need a looming mortgage. Like you need a roof over your head and food in your kids' mouths and that's it. It is a labor of love and it's not as glamorous as my little 1970s home, but I, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be, it's like, it's where our kids know a home. And we get to slop pigs and feed cows for the rest of our lives and get old. Oh, it's so wonderful. Mm -hmm. I love you. I love you too. So what, what else? Huh? They asked me what my role is. What's your role? What's your role? You're as a husband or as a father? I mean, what are we doing? All of those, like proudly stated. What is my, your role? My role is to work and provide and protect. Girl math, we want to hear it. We want to hear it more in detail. Why? How are you working? Very hard. How are you providing? To the best of my abilities. How are you serving? As humbly as I can. You're so cute. <laughs> what are some examples on how you try to be a Proverbs 31 woman in your daily life? I get out of bed. I get out of bed. I know the Proverbs 31 woman, she be running around doing everything before the crack of dawn. So I tell myself, if I get out of bed, I'm one step closer. How would you say I'm a Proverbs 31 woman? Am I even a Proverbs 31 woman? Yes, you are. You think so? Am I a Proverbs 31 woman? No. Okay. You're a man. We need the image of God. Ooh! An Ephesians 5 husband loves his wife is able to express his love in both practical and emotional ways, is more concerned with a woman's holiness than her hotness, seeks to apply it to his life, realizes that his life and his relationships are really meant to bring glory to God, desires to join with a woman in such a way he considers her well-being like his own. Okay, that's cute, but you already do those things. So what, you're trying to find something I fail in? Is no. Like oh. Biblical roles of a husband. He must be the protector. He must love his wife. He should love God more than his wife. He must be the leader of his home and he must provide. You're doing, you do really good at things. Oh. Thank you for doing a video with me. I appreciate it. All right, let's go watch our kids. That was fun.